So I guess it's uh, it's something that has uh, been dear to everyone's heart and everyone likes to see the NVT, uh, both at Grower Group um, autumn updates and uh, Springfield day level and also the, uh, the national updates. It gives, uh, uh, it gives, it's something I guess that's ongoing, it's uh, real time development of uh, how our wheat varieties, in this particular case wheat varieties are going in the, uh, in the market. So I'll just follow this little unit. So I guess I'm going to talk about, um, for fear of boring you, but I'm going to keep a consistent uh, message on how I've been presenting the MBT over years. And so what I've been saying two years ago and three years ago is still the same current message. And if there isn't been a change in message, I can actually let you know what that's been. So I guess where I'm going to talk about, I'm going to just talk about the main varieties. I'm not going to try and address every variety that's come and gone and is currently in the marketplace. So I just want to talk about the main ones that affect you as uh, consultants and uh, growers and people who are making money out of these varieties. So I'm going to just talk about the level of adoption and show you how, how long it actually does take for from the time it comes from the breeding through NVT and other evaluative, evaluative trials into, uh, into grower land. And, uh, and just the correlation to NVT, I mean that's why we're running the NVT, just to see what happens, see if what's coming out of the NVT is translating to growers actually adoption, adopting the varieties and making money out of it. I'm just going to talk about, I'll still keep talking about the localised one year snapshot of variety performance, which you saw on that, uh, Alan just addressed that then, and also compare it to our long term predicted yields. So just a little one term, uh, long, short term, one year located. Uh, rock trial result, which you can't make decisions on, but it's interesting to see, and then compare it to what's going to what your predicted yields are over time. So it's just a, a couple of tools that you can add to uh, your data collecting or information collecting exercises. Uh, I'm just going to show some trial results north to south and uh, of the same key varieties. Um, just going to address nitrogen a little bit. Um, we are facing a little bit of criticism from uh, growers uh, that we apply too much nitrogen. I'll just address that. And I'm just going to have a little attempt at PowerPoint stand-up comedy. And if it fails, let me know halfway through so I can get off. So I guess some of the varieties that have hit the marketplace this year, uh, if you look at them, they're snakes, weapons, and uh, and towns. So has anyone actually been to Korak? No, not have I. Oh, we've got them. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Perhaps you can give a rundown. I'll get someone to give me a rundown, David, of what the town's like. Uh, cobra, it's actually an aeroplane, but uh, for my exercise it's a snake. And uh, we've got some rocks, and uh, has anyone, anyone here ever been built by a Justica or a cord? So, a couple of weapons. So that's, that's what's in the marketplace now. So areas signed to wheat varieties, this is CBH uh, type uh, information, it's becoming harder and harder to get. And uh, so what I want to show you here is, you know, ooh, I'll go back again. What I want to show you here is you've got your wild catching, which has been dominant over a long time, and you've got um, last year's results and this year's results. There's a little bit of a bit of a decline, but essentially still a damn big share of the market. So obviously, grass have been happy with that variety; they've been earning money with it. And if you come over here, so is this substitution or or what is it? If you come over here and we have a look at Magenta, now that's been around for a few years, it's had a little bit of a hiccup in its introduction to the marketplace. So 2010 wasn't much in the way of deliveries. 2011, uh, we're starting to see a lot more deliveries of uh, Magenta as growers have been able to get it in and take up a reasonable share, about 9% of the market. Mace, for example, started later than Magenta, so we've been going through um, grower to grower trading and uh, getting it into the marketplace so the deliveries can start. So <clears throat> this is area, area signed to it and delivery, well, area signed to it. So there's a lot of retention. So let's see where these go. If the, we'll see where the trend continues over next year and the year after and so on. So where is the, where is that? It's got to be substitution. Um, so what's happening here, you have a look at, say, Kalingri, for example, still an effervescent variety, still growing, but the noodle market is a little bit smaller than it used to be and a little bit unsure as to what's going to happen with the variety Kalingri and the noodle market in general and perhaps there's substitution occurring with those two varieties. Have a look at Yitpi, and again, it's an old variety. It's used, for, uh, it's used by growers predominantly south of the Great Eastern Highway for frost risk management, and they have been doing it for a long time, and it's gone from sort of 2 3%, sitting at about 12% now of the West Australian market. Not bad for an old variety. Um, Bonnie Rock, uh, fairly consistent. Westania, same, fairly consistent. 
stiletto, formerly a cynic, as I said before, but there might be some STL amongst that lot. <coughs> and Carnima, yeah, it's starting to go down because we haven't had any hay H varieties over time, uh, for a long time. So uh, you might see Carnima with some of the new AH varieties start to take a bit of a, a slide. So that's just how, how long it takes for varieties to get into the marketplace. This is uh, its correlation to the NVT, how it ranks in the NVT and uh, the level of adoption. So if you have a look here, Mace and Wild Catchem are both um, pretty high in the ratings in the NVT and the area sign for Wild Catchem is way different to Mace because it's still coming into the market. So you're going to see this, I'd imagine, over time, this area planted is going to correlate fairly well with like this here. Um, you've got something like uh, Kalingri, Growers love it, they've kept it for many years and are going to continue with it. And um, There's really no, we've had Banu on the scene for a long time, that's not even on the radar. <coughs> and Yandanuka is another variety that's been around for a while but not getting any adoption. So the means the growers are hanging with what they've got and Fortune is the other one that's hanging in the wings but we can't see yet. Um, Bonnie Rock, um, it does a lot better, it's more of a niche market, a niche grown area. And uh, so it does very well across the board in the NVTs, but I think people um, have an affinity with more of the wider, wider adopted, or wider adaptability of some of these varieties, which is why you're seeing um, less uptake of these other varieties. Um, I just guess that uh, with the statistics and uh, the, the one-stop shop analysis of um, what you see in one year in one spot versus our long-term predicted yields, you need to be able to use or uh, have a good look at the uh, long-term predicted yields so it can just iron out these one little one little ditches you get year in year out. So I have a good understanding of um, I have as much understanding of statistics as old Mary Lee here. So um, I'm going to compare or show you what what the varieties and how they perform. Uh, looking at um, if you go I'm going across egg zones here. So rather than a state state met, I'm doing by egg zone and this is our one-stop, one-year snapshot, followed by the meta-analysis and how it performs. So if you have a look there, we're not too far, too far apart, but your long-term predicted yield is a better way to analyse uh, how the varieties perform. If you have a look at something there like Fortune and Yandanuka, um, you can see here that it's long-term analysis, or if you go on a long-term analysis or even a snapshot, compared to Aaron, the performance of Aaron and Kalingri on a, on a uh, on a year-to-year -year basis, um, they've got to come up with the goods to be able to knock off a benchmark variety that's already in the market. I just thought I'd put up mace and magenta and wild catchment because it's always topical and um, I can see why uh, AGT want me to put up the, uh, the long-term analysis and uh, mace is a good variety. It has proven itself both in, uh, in AGT's trials, in, in the NVT and all other sorts of evaluation. And it's, I think the, way, the reason why it's doing so good is it's adaptable across all zones and can cover a range of environmental conditions and seasons. So that's, that's uh, Mace is proving to be pretty good and if you compare that compared to the adoption level and where it's going and uh, its performance, it's, it's equating to that. Magenta, we've had magenta, we have, we've got to be careful with it in dry years because of the, it needs a longer growing season and so on. So, in any one year we can do a, uh, a pretty good performance and in the long term analysis it's still a very good variety but we have to develop some agronomic packages for it. And Wild Catchem has got years and years of data and has been a good variety and performs very well. But if you remember I talk about Wild Catchem in Ag Zone 3 and its ability, well my surmising is that its ability to handle um, small frost events or frost events and that's why we've never ever been able to really have uh, well, catch and perform in Ag Zone 3, and that's coming through in the data and information continuously. So, but otherwise, all of the other uh, Ag Zones, and in particular Ag Zone 5, was well widely adopted in the Esmond Zone in particular, and uh, does pretty well in there. The AH varieties, when all of a sudden we've got a, a whole raft of them, uh, of AH, and if you have a look at something like Cobra, um, in our one stop snapshot, if you go and make your decisions on that. This year it was a great year for almost a, a lot of varieties. Now it's Carnima maturity and I like, you know, it's good. I like the look of it. But if you have a look at the meta-analysis, we need more data points to see how it performs over a lot longer period of time. 
Um, most, again, showing consistency. Emu Rock is a, uh, a quick, quick season AH variety, and again, we've only seen it for a couple of years, and uh, it's we need to know a lot more about it. And uh, King Rock was, I just put that in to show that that is you know, a good replacement for Bonnie Rock and gives us that disease resistance we've been after. Uh, Corac, which is provisional ASW, uh, this is that uh, small Victorian town. I don't think there'll be much adoption of it, you know, just purely because it's a uh, Victorian wheat. Just, uh, <laughs> just, keep, just keep that in mind. But again, fantastic results in year one, and uh, it's certainly worth looking at. But this, don't forget, this variety is, uh, it handles terminal drought very well and uh, it's got some good disease resistances and um, a good disease, reasonable disease package and it's performed well right across the board. So we need to learn more about that. If you put it to where it was supposed to be bred for, it's in the dry areas, you might be uh, penalising yourself in the higher rainfall. But anyway, it's something that we really need to uh, understand a little bit more of. Then we had the, uh, the two, two gene varieties and imposed justica and cord. Um, same thing again, and I think I was fairly clear in all the presentations we've made, they're great varieties, they're, they're good, good to have in our, um, in our management systems, on our properties, but they'll be used sparingly and understand that you're using group B herbicides, resistance management strategies, all those sorts of things. They're not to be, I don't believe, and if you have a look at the meta-analysis or your one, one term, well, a little short, uh, look at the look at the varieties. They're not up there with the big group. They're not up there with the main mainstream varieties where you're going to make money out of. These are for economic systems and where you need to use them on your farm to handle uh, specific uh, situations. So um, just remember that they are there for a purpose, not as a mainstream variety. Um, so I'm just going to go through uh, just quickly on the. Um, just some of the yields, I'll just let you wander through them and have a look. I just grab the main varieties and see where they went. It's a snapshot, not, not uh, meta-analysis. And just some of the yields we got off them, and there's your time of sowing. So for Una and Nabor this year, that's actually a very late time of sowing. That's their late, that's their last paddock. Um, it's time of sowing for us this year. Menu, um, good sand plain, magenta, you know, that's what you set your magenta up for. Uh, did very well there. But as did uh, Cobra and, and uh, Mason, and Wild Catch and the whole lot. So, um, so it just gives you a little bit of an idea. Buntine and Pathara, so what essentially that is, that's a heavy land site, that's a deep sand plain site, and uh, Corrigan and Hyden, uh, both sand plain. I'll just let you wander through those and have a look. And Gibson and Scadden, so that's, a, that's the, uh, well, let's say we'll show you the dog sheep clay and the uh, the um, sand plane. So it just gives you an idea of the sort of yields we achieved at the site and uh, I think everyone likes to have a look at some yields every now and again and uh, see that we did have a really good year right across the board, didn't matter whether it's north or south, east or west. Um, the, the nitrogen story and uh, trying to achieve proteins, um, target proteins, remember we've got a whole raft of different varieties in there, we've got a whole raft of different soil types, environments, rainfall, Sometimes thunderstorms, sometimes not, and different uh, rotations of wheat on wheat, canola, and so on. So it's quite a difficult exercise, and applying nitrogen is not an exact science. So we have to try and achieve quality parameters, otherwise it's part of the MET that we, uh, we have to achieve quality parameters. We're evaluating genetics, not nitrogen use or those sorts of things. So the MET is not to be used as a um, you know, gross margin analysis or anything like that. And a lot of this sort of work is, should have been done before. We get it to have a look at it. We're not selecting for varieties that require huge amounts of nitrogen to achieve um, genetic potential, I don't believe. And uh, perhaps we can do more. We can work with CSBP and uh, use their, well, use SIN from DAFOR and CSBP's um, analysis methods. And, but the time lags and the uh, different rotations we have to put in, it's pretty busy at the end of this, at the start of the season to try and get it right over the rest of the season. So you can see here that we, we got 50% of all varieties and uh, trial sites in under uh, 10 to 12.2%. And we had 25% out here and 25% spread along the, that data line there. So yeah, we just can't get it right all the time, but we endeavour to. And uh, apologies for those of you who think we're using way too much nitrogen. 
So I'll just go back and then, same thing again. What I said before, is it still current and where we're going to? Um, Mace, very consistent performer across all leg zones, suited to the 2009 season, same for 2010, that was dry, and it was a wet one in 2011. Now remember, you know, we few trial sites we got to, it was, it was growers complaining about yellow spot and all those sorts of things. Well yes, we did have yellow spot, uh, you've got to be aware of its resistance status, intense year for yellow spot, we might not see it again for a couple of years, but just keep that in mind that you know, each year you will see something different. And yes, there was yellow spot, it was sprayed for. Um, I don't think there was any, uh, much in the way yield penalties, but uh, we won't know how the NVT, um, that's where the agronomic trials occur. But I don't think it's it's a huge issue. It's just uh, not quite up to, uh, say, wild catchment in terms of yellow spot, but still pretty pretty good. So again, I think it's performing well across all, all spheres of operation. King Rock, uh, it's, it's going to be a good replacement for Bonnie Rock, just gives us that disease resistance. I said uh, in 2009, Kalingri has to go, Fortune will do for the moment because it was going to get um, uh, penalised out of the market. Uh, then a heap of growers kept growing it, a lucky bonus, got some big bucks in 2010, and uh, they just keep hanging with Kalingri because um, Fortune, Fortune's ready to go to replace it, but they keep hanging with Kalingri because they know it, still make money out of it, and no one's told them yet not to grow it. Um, agenda requires a longer season to reach yield and quality potential. We hear that time and time again. The same in 2010 and you got your wish in uh, 2011. Now, I think we know enough about the variety, growers know enough about the variety, you can advise on it and how to work with it. But I still think it needs an agronomic package developed for it uh, to be a, a, a variety that'll uh, take a good place in the market. Um, 3176 or Emu Rock, well, I haven't seen enough of it. Uh, as you can see there, it's just, it's just rolled up on, rolled up. Uh, it's got a sound disease package, including yellow spot, uh, large seed size, and that, it's so, it's quite on the, uh, the size means that you do have to watch your sowing rates and work out what target plant density you need uh, per square metre. So just be aware of that, very large seed size. So that it's designed more for the lower rainfall, that's where we'll slot it at the moment, but who knows where it could be uh, applicable across our uh, ag zones. So, um, yeah, keep an eye on that one. Um, 2316 or CORAC. See, I didn't do that justice, sticking it down the bottom. Uh, it's an ASW provisional, I think, later on in autumn. Uh, is that right, Jason? Where are you? Sorry? Late March, early Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so, we'll see, hopefully, uh, we can get that up to uh, an APW. Um, but it's a wild catch of derivative, but as I said, it's Victorian, so let's, be, let's watch it. And uh, remember in the field days this year, I said that uh, we, every time we looked at that variety, I said, ooh, what about the yellow spot? And we said, ooh, yeah, it's nasty. It's not yellow spot, it's physiological yellowing. So be aware of those sort of characteristics in the varieties as well. Um, I've, got to, I've got to follow through with the, I could get uh, another, another one year penalty for mentioning codes, but um, yeah, 3919 was the last one of that particular group. We talked a lot about it at Springfield days, and unfortunately LMA took that out, so we've lost that group there. It was pretty good looking, that one. Westonia, uh, Cobra's come in as an 8H, 75% of it is, uh, is Westonia, and so we do have this particular variety, which I've been rabbiting on about for years, as, uh, as coming to a particular variety here. Um, and the two gene wheats, uh, they, they were logged into the marketplace very quickly. They have been in the wings for a long, long time, so it was good to see those get released and so the growers can actually grab them and have a run with them. So I'm just going to uh, go through, um, in summary, uh, Mace will continue its march into WA and uh, I think with the NBT, the data and information that's produced by it and its performance in growers' paddocks has been pretty good. Um, Magenta, it does prefer a longer uh, growing season with a wet finish and, uh, and it does need an agonite package to get the best out of that variety. Um, emu rock, just watch the seed size on emu rock. So adjust your sowing rates accordingly and we'll look at this variety over the next couple of years and uh, I think it's got some good potential. Cobra had a setback a couple of years ago and uh, with in particular I think the seed quality and so it came with some pretty bad numbers but it hung in there and uh, we've got it released in 2011 with some West Arnie in it. So it's good to see that variety and see how that goes. 
uh, core racks in the market. Hopefully the RSW nuts get tightened up to an APW as a minimum. And uh, we had widespread market release in 2011 of the uh, two gene wheats. And that's good because we can get back to three leaf timing on um, uh, applying our uh, intermix. And uh, we've got the three, you've got the Justica, which is a little bit longer season, and Cord and Impose, which is shorter season, and Impose is the shortest of the lot. And so it's Impose is Wild Catch and look alike, uh, Cord is a Gladius derivative, and the Justica is Gladius style up, spear type, so longer season. Um, that was what caused the LMA rat, uh, the LMA, uh, sorry, the 3 to 1 9 to crash was the LMA. And uh, Klinger and Arano, until they knocked off out of that perch, uh, they'll, they'll just keep growing. But uh, the fortune is they're ready to take over, should it be needed. And growers like to observe and benchmark before adopting new varieties, I'm pretty clear on that. Don't, uh, don't go holes bowls and grab something and run with it until you've tried it out. Benchmark it against what you're making money out of already. So breeders and marketers, you need to get as many ducks in a row as you can. Possible prior, uh, possible variety lease, release, and the NVT is just one tool of that. And uh, there is certainly more varieties on the way, and we'll see what they are for next year. So I'd just like to acknowledge, in particular for us, is uh, our grower cooperators and the grower groups. We work as closely as we can with those guys, and uh, the GRDC for funding the NVT. I think it's a flagship that's been put together by the GRDC and is uh, well and truly recognised and respected in certainly in Western Australia and ACAS for uh, putting up with all the uh, rubbish that goes with uh, running a program like this and our, my staff, my colleague staff uh, for putting all this together and doing all the work and uh, we do depend a lot on consultants as well. So thank you very much. Peter, uh, when do we get to replace it then? Thousands of varieties coming out every, every year, and none of them seems to be able to finish all the way we have. Haven't you got a scout out there? Yeah, but you too? Ah, uh, certainly okay. No, look, I that's I haven't got anything on the radar at the moment for for that. And I think if you if you have a look at the level of adoption of UP, it, it's again it's a variety that's been proven and uh, growers have adopted it. And something has to come on, it has to be fairly special to knock it off and has to have you know, significantly improved attributes. So I haven't, there isn't anything sitting there at the moment, but uh, I, we only deal with the NVT stuff and I'm not really sure what's coming through the breeding, breeding um, organisations.